Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Carriage House Metalworks. Today we're going to be working in the forge, making one of these bottle cap openers out of 3 8 inch square stock. It's a little bit chilly this morning, about 22 degrees. I got to bring all of the gear from inside the shop outside to get it set up and um, uh, we are going to be using a new forge that I designed and built and uh, I've only used a few times here and we're going to be using coke today as opposed to coal and I'll show you how I start a coke fire in my forge. You can see here that I have been experimenting with making various kinds of bottle cap openers. They're all unique, they're all different, and they all work. This bottle cap opener here is a pretty hefty design. Got some railroad spike openers here. But today we're going to focus on making one of these guys. This bottle cap opener is designed so you can hold it in various different ways. You can begin by just holding it on to the handle here and grabbing onto the bottle and popping your lid. You can put your finger forward and pop the lid. You can hold it up close. You can basically hold it any way you want. done some experimenting with this opener over the last couple days and I've discovered that a length of about 13 inches seems to work extremely well for the end product. So I'm just going to mark off a section of 3 8 inch square stock here and cut it off and head out to the forge. I have a uh, power bandsaw but it's just as quick to cut these little 3 8 inch sections off by hand as opposed to setting up the bandsaw and then getting it all cleaned up. I don't have my vise mounted permanently to my welding table here. I just have it clamped down. That's why it's wiggling a little bit. So 
goes slow at the end here as it gets close to the edge so we don't have a huge hanging burr. Knock off the edge burrs here. As part of setting up the forge for today's uh, project, I've got a whole menagerie of tools and tongs here that I use. So um, what we're going to use today is just a couple wire brushes to remove scale. Got a um, brass brush for finishing off the project. It um, you can brush the uh, bottle opener. As it's cooling down, it gives it a nice brass looking highlight um, to the project, giving it some char more character. Gloves, obviously. Um, today, I'm going to be using this pair of uh, tongs I bought from GS Tongs out of Taiwan. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel. Uh, this is specifically for 3 8 inch stock and every once in a while I'll need to fold the flat section so I'm going to use um, these tongs here they're basically flat tongs with a nice little recess indentation in the jaws Got a couple of uh, railroad spikes here um, that I cleaned all of the rust and scale off of that I'm getting ready to make twisted bottle cap openers. I've got a few other uh, tongs here for pieces of metal stock that I cut on my laser uh, machine. Uh, it's a lot cheaper. This is all dropped from other projects. So instead of uh, recycling it, I just cut it up into sections of stock here of various widths and lengths to fit the tongs that I have available. I'm also going to use uh, to finish the product um, to prevent uh, rusting is this Mother's California Gold Ultimate Waxing System. It's pure Brazilian Corolla wax. I just have a rag inside for hand wiping. Uh, if the project's really hot, I just use a pair of long uh, tongs with um, steel wool on the end that you can rub your wax onto your project. I typically dip it into the tub here, it melts the wax, you get some of the wet wax, and then I rub it uh, all over the project like this. So we'll be taking that outside today as well. Um, one other item that I'll use here is every once in a while I'll have a piece of stock that's a little bit too long and I need to cut it off. Um, so I'll be taking my cutoff hardy outside with me today as well. couple hammers we'll be using. I just use a ball peen hammer for uh, texturing on the flat sections. Uh, gives it some character. I've got a rounding hammer that I use a whole lot for just about all the projects that I work on. And I have a small hammer here also made by Glenn at GS Tongs over in Taiwan. You should check out his channel. It's uh, it's really cool. He does some really nice projects. So I like this hammer a lot. You can really choke up on it. He's got indentations in the handle here at various spots to fit your fingers and your thumb. So you can really hold on to it. You want to choke up for fine detail work. So I believe that's it for the tools that we're going to use. Uh, let's get some of this stuff moved outside. Let's get the... Uh 
gear brought outside. I don't have a lot of room in the shop, so what I do is I have uh, these removable handles that I screw in to the forge, and I keep the forge set right next to the door, so when I want to use it, I just pull it out, get it set up. My ash bucket is underneath, I forgot to take out. While I'm forging, I take these handles off so I don't run into them. Bring my anvil out on a dolly. So for the uh, forge, I basically crafted it out of steel tubing. I had these old carriage wheels and I thought it was a great idea to incorporate them into a forge idea. However, uh, it's kind of difficult wheeling this thing in and out, so uh, I'm planning on replacing these guys with some uh, tires, believe it or not. If I go to a show or something, I'll go ahead and put these back on just for aesthetic looks. So, my pot I uh, purchased off the shelf, and it's got a uh, clinker handle here breaking up the clinkers. What's nice about using coke is you don't get a whole lot of clinkers. You can see I already had some coke on the forge from yesterday's burn. So I, uh, I have a hand crank, an antique hand crank blower. Um, but I have the design here set up so I can use a uh, electric fan, which I really like, over the uh, hand crank, particularly for coke. You really need a lot of air when you're running coke. And here's the plumbing that I have set up for the hand blower. Got a little handle here where I can open and close the vents to direct air from whatever source that I'm using for a particular project. So to get the fire started today, I'm going to cheat a little bit and use a torch. And I have a bucket of kindling that I split up just for lighting my cook. Okay, so in order to efficiently and, and quickly start a coke fire, you need to have <clears throat> some wood kindling available. So I have a little four inch sections of scrap wood that I pulled out of the, the wood pile. I keep laying around. <clears throat> so what I do is I'll start off with a little backer board on a hard surface, which is my shop floor, and I have a little hand hatchet. And all I do is basically cut these larger pieces down into smaller ones, like 
that. Eventually, they will stand up by themselves. I don't hold it. I see some guys go like this. I don't like that at all because I did just about lose my finger at one point in time where it gave way and then came down too fast. And I really keep my axes and hatchets really sharp. So I usually keep my hands out of the way. Give it a good swat so it goes all the way through. Then resheath your hatchet, put it away. And then I bring these smaller pieces up. And I have to use my, my cutoff hardy on my, my anvil. It's a much safer way to split these guys into smaller pieces. Oh, I guess I should bring the camera up so you can see that. Ah, that's much better. So let me start over. So you take all these little pieces that you sliced up earlier with your hatchet and split them into these smaller pieces. It goes really fast. Grab a handful of these smaller pieces and keep them in your hand so you don't have to keep bending over. There you go, and I just pick up all these little pieces and keep them in that in the bucket nearby. So to get started, I just take newspaper, crumple it up, not too tight, into a ball. I usually find that uh, four sheets of newspaper is enough to get a coke fire going on the first fire. So fingers crossed that we get this thing going with one try. Take a whole handful of kindling and pile it on top there for coke. You need to uh, put a lot on here, get a good kindling fire going first before you put the coke on. Use the torch, get the fire going. I get it going in several different places.
Lucky bring some new coke that I haven't used before and sprinkle it on the fire. I really haven't found that new versus uh, previously burned coke starts any differently. Uh, If there's burned a little bit, that smoke you see is actually the wood, it's not the coke. Pat it down just a little bit. Eventually all that smoke from the kindling is going to go away and you'll have just the coke burned. I open up the damper just a little bit after it's been burning a while. Get some more air blowing across the coke. And as the fire is uh, getting set up, I usually bring uh, more coke over and get it on the table. Open the damper a little bit more. I can see that the coke down inside there is actually uh, burning pretty good. And as you can see, as the kindling burns away, most of the smoke uh, disappears. Top it down once more. And I'm going to go ahead and put my stock in the fire. Get some heat on it. Start to build my coke pile. Always like to have the fire just above the surface of the fire pot. That way I can lay stock into the fire without having to dig down into it. Also keep a piece of soapstone laying around 
for marking the dimensions on the stock so I know actually where I need to start and end um, with my hammering process. Ah, looks like we're ready to start hammering. 